My parents moved from Ireland to Middle England in the early 1990s. The house that they bought was built in the early 1900s. It was a pretty Gregorian, it was semi-detached, and next door, which used to be part of the garden, were an older couple. They lived there and we became very close to them. We actually considered them family, basically some surrogate grandparents if you will. The woman's name was Maggie and she actually grew up in our house. They built their house on what was once the garden in ours to look after her aging mother. Her mother was a wealthy woman. They had a live-in maid and would have been considered quite upper class back in the day. But unfortunately, her children were all ailing in some way. Her eldest boy died at four. Maggie had diabetes and in fact was actually one of the first people to ever receive insulin, which saved her life in her late teens. The youngest boy was very disabled, physically challenging and nonverbal. Maggie's husband, who we called Grandpa Jay, thought that the little brother may have had some sort of locked-in syndrome with quite a lot of intellectual gifts beneath the inability to communicate. In 2011, after working far too hard in my early 20s in my first job after university, I felt completely burnt out. Six years of intense high-level schooling and then a 60-hour work week? No thanks. I moved back for a bit just to take a breather while finding another job. Three weeks in of me being there, Granddad Jay's brother-in-law died. He would have been in his early 90s at the time. All of this paranormal activity began within days of the brother-in-law's death. First of all, we just had this kind of eerie feeling, like I was being watched. And I remember wondering if I'd developed some kind of anxiety problem, as I had suffered panic attacks for a brief spell in my teens. But then came the scratching. We never had a bird or mouse problem before. I asked my parents if we should have a pest control come over and check the walls of the house. They said it only been quite recently, so we should wait a while. Maybe it was some roosting pigeons nestling the last weeks of their fledglings. But then came a kind of tapping, or a rapping sound. Almost like someone was gently knocking from within the bricks of the house. I became so used to strange sounds around me that I lost all interest in trying to find the source. Usually, taps, knocks, and bangs were all accounted for. I presumed maybe old pipes had become unsecured or the next door had rats. But I also ignored the fact that we lived in a house for 20 years and had nothing of these problems before. One morning, I woke with a start. It was dusk, about 5 a.m. The old TV that sat abandoned for six years in a corner in my brother's old room, where I was sleeping, was clicking madly. The walls were scratching. The knocking was in a frenzy. Even though the heating was off and it was summer, I knew no pipes could have been causing it. I stared around for a few seconds, completely in terror and shock, and realized almost instantly that this was paranormal energy that I was feeling. When I say the energy was frenzied, I mean it. It was like a quietish cacophony. I filmed it with my old phone. I have it on my laptop somewhere. People used to tell me, you can't film that shit. That's why ghosts don't exist. Well, guess what? You can. I know nothing about the paranormal. I used to piss myself laughing at horror films. So why would paranormal activity just come into my head so strongly and completely if that's not what it was? I just found that odd. This went on for a few days and I mentioned it to my mom. She laughed it off. My mom is an accountant and a super intelligent and practical person. She's where unnecessary drama goes to die. I googled it and found an article, but what was creepy about it, and still scares me to this day, was that it was textbook what was happening to me. The scratches, the tappings, how it seemed to be getting louder and how the sounds began to feel intentional, like three obvious knocks rather than just tapping. So human, so intelligent. Also, I never felt fear like that. I could have a wonderful evening laughing with friends. They go home, I go up to bed feeling so warm and wonderful, and then I awake, unlike anything I've ever felt before. Always somewhere between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. The most unbelievable sense of dread. That frankly did not feel like it came from me. I mean, it feels like it came from another source. 
and then the nightmare started to come. I felt like the more I thought about it, the more it would feed off my energy. Like there was a legit psychological level up to all of this. That was the worst part about all of it. The nightmares were always the same. I woke up, only I couldn't move, like sleep paralysis. And there was a dark presence in the room, sometimes in the form of a shadow in the corner. It was like a large male shadow and the most ominous feeling I've ever felt. Terror and danger unlike anything I could have ever imagined. I had never and have never had nightmares before or since, except maybe those odd small ones that everybody gets. I haven't had any experience like it since actually. Typing about it even spooks me out because I feel like the energy you let in is whatever this thing feeds on. Despite this though, I chalked it all up to anxiety and told mum I was no longer sleeping in that room. She told me she'd swap, so I went out on the sofa. The next few days were fine and peaceful until mum came down one morning completely ashen faced. I asked if she was okay. She described getting sleep paralysis even though she didn't know what it was. This was the first time she'd ever experienced anything like that in her life, may I add. She described my experience, the male shadow figure, in the same corner, with the same feeling. And mind you, I hadn't told her about all of this. Grandpa Jay's brother-in-law was over six feet, by the way, so I get the distinct impression it could have been him. He was an angry, tortured soul. And that room was Maggie's old room. Mum also had that classic incubus encounter thing going on too. I didn't have that experience. When I told her to Google it, it looked like it was the real thing. She was horrified by how similar her experiences were to others because she'd never heard about this either. Things only got worse from there. Whatever this thing was grew angrier and angrier. Every night, just as you were about to drift into sleep, literally that second of losing consciousness, there would be a huge bang on the headboard, like the whole strength of an incredibly strong man, and it would wrench you from your sleep. This was happening in every single room now. We all started to get insomnia, not sleeping for the best part of three months of shit, let me tell you that. I was getting really fed up, and I was a nervous wreck. I decided I had to move out, but before I did, I called the carbon monoxide person to check for leaks. Maybe it was paranoia. When he came out, there wasn't any. A week before I moved out, things started happening in the day, and even my father, who had angrily shut down all of this repeatedly, agreed to finally get some spiritual help, maybe even a priest. My dad is more stubborn than an ocean of mules and hates anything remotely dramatic or whimsical. He's a working class Irish man and a scientist, through and through. He deeply resents the magical thinking of anybody that brings it up. But now even he believes something else was going on. The night we decided on that, I woke up with one of those huge bangs, only to find my books all over the floor. I finally had evidence to show my parents, and they couldn't deny that. I sure as hell didn't throw them. I couldn't have. I didn't leave my bed. I screamed, and they came in. They would have heard it if I left my bed. The last few days included audible growls. I even tried recording some. We got incredibly strong smells of male sweat mixed with some kind of ammonia. And my sister, who was now visiting too, started screaming and almost ran right over to the neighbor's house because when I was explaining how the knock seemed intentional, like sometimes one, two, three, as soon as I finished saying three, there were three very loud intentional knocks on the door right next to us. I heard my name whispered so many times. Whatever this thing was wanted us to know that it was hearing us. Mum even said she had the feeling of being pushed across the landing against a wall in the middle of the day. I left. Mum went to church for the first time in 20 years. She only went a few times, but she said it actually helped. I came back to visit three months later. One morning, when I heard my mom come down for breakfast, I turned to her, and we both just said, it's gone. At the same time, it was like we both felt this relief. Like I said, I never had any experience before or since like this, me or anyone else in my family, 
It was just for that few months of terror. Never even a bad nightmare in the ten years since then. I now have this theory that humans are monumentally egotistical when it comes to thinking that the universe begins and ends within the realm of our five limited senses. It's not completely unfeasible to me to think that there are sentient beings or entities or maybe even animals that we just can't easily detect. So, do I believe? No, not resolutely, because it was only one period of time in my life, and it was fairly short and contained. But do I now keep a very open mind where I once left it off? Absolutely. My dad denied it ever happened, but mum and I aren't so foolish. For anyone who may be scared, I moved back to this house four years later, and I'm still there, actually. It remains one of the most lovely and homey feelings that I've ever had. This place does not have that ominous feeling anymore. It was like Grandpa Jay's brother-in-law just got up and left one day. I've never experienced anything like it since. Nothing's bad forever. Have a good night.